Hey guys, welcome to this joint webinar from Royal Cyber and HCL Software. Our topic for the day is upgrade to HCL Commerce for unbeatable business capabilities, where we'll be discussing uh, a little architecture details and features for HCL Commerce and how easy it is to migrate from Oracle or any other platform uh, to HCL Commerce. The speakers for the day would be Peter Warden, who's the Senior Director of Marketing at HCL Software, Brian Gillespie, who's the Vice President of Product Management at HCL Software. My name is Sayyid Zishan Tazib Hussain, and I'm the Practice Head of HCL Commerce at Royal Cyber. Vivek Rana, who's a Senior Technical Lead for HCL Commerce at Royal Cyber. We'll be covering the following agenda in today's session. Why it's time to change from Oracle ATG, tense that you might be missing out on, integrated composable commerce, uh, where we'll talk about the architecture, data modernization, scalability, and uh, reduction to Royal Cyber and our HCL commerce practice, and eventually the migration. So what it takes to migrate to HCL commerce. And then we have put up a demo for the a little important feature that uh, you'll get with HCL commerce. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session, so you're more than welcome to participate and ask anything that you might have. So without further ado, we'll pass it on to Peter Wharton. Hi, guys, and thanks for the introduction. Yep, my name's Pete Wharton. I manage marketing for HCL Commerce. You know, Unless you're on HCL Commerce Cloud, any time is a good time for replatforming. But joking aside, I mean, as Oracle can't make their mind up about whether they're going to be committed to Oracle ATG, you know, you do need to think about looking at um, the platform change. There's many reasons for that. Um, but, you know, I just look at overall, when I look at digital, it's becoming or is already your most important sales channel why risk old technology, you know, even if you have customized the hell out of it um, to, to meet your requirements? You know, today you, you need to be more than just digital. It's no longer good enough just to be to digital. You need to be digital plus. What does digital plus actually mean? It means being able to explore new ways of delivering products, services and experiences to achieve sustainable competitive advantage. That's the real reason why you, you need to replatform. You need to be agile and you need to be able to support the digital plus economy. But let's let's look at three reasons that you that you should replatform. So the first is that what's that lost opportunity cost? You know, the missed opportunity is obviously to do with missed revenue opportunities. You know, when opportunities come along, you don't have to wait to be able to use it, to build it or to integrate it. You simply want to be able to turn it on. You know, if you're in IT, how many times have you had to say to your to your business users, uh, yes, we can do that, but you're in the backlog of work that's going to take six, nine, 12 months to, to catch up. You know, what about if you're a business user and, you know, you want to use it, but you um, just can't get uh, raised in the priority and the opportunity misses you by. You know, I look at, I just look at commerce today and I think, you know, things are just accelerating. There was a McKinsey report, I believe, that said in the last five years, we went from five channels to over 10 channels that customers or consumers want to want to use. And you've got to have that flexibility to really deliver that omni-channel experience. Are you truly on the channel? Can you support all those channels with a consistent experience? Secondly, total cost of ownership. You know, our customers are saying to us that they want to move to the cloud. And one of the key reasons that they want to, to move to the cloud is they want to drive down the the cost the total cost of ownership and we've got customers that have that have done just that and have found that using infrastructure on a pay as you go process has allowed them to reduce their overall uh, cost of ownership by 50% and then the third the third point is about risk it's about security you know are you gambling with your brand's reputation you know, 
security is critical for your su su sustained success, you know, but you really can't afford when you if if and when you have a security problem that you, you know, have downtime and lost revenue from that failure. You know, the legal and regulatory um, consequences that come with um, that security breach, you know, the, the damage to your brand and the lost customers who probably don't come back because they don't trust your your store, your um, your commerce site. And, you, you know, one of the ways that you can get around that is having a vendor who is proactive and not reactive to your security requirements. And then I look at the trends that are happening out in the marketplace and it, you know, the, the pace of commerce is just accelerating and the longer you wait in order to uh, move to a new platform that has a lot of these capabilities built in, um, I, I believe you truly are missing out on driving, driving re revenue and selling more to your customers. But if I start with, you know, AI and ML, you know, Simple things like in, in search, um, improve search accuracy by understanding intent and context. You know, it's all about removing the friction from the from the buying process. And everybody, nearly everybody starts um, with search rather than going navigation. They go through search and they want to get to what they want as quickly as possible. And they don't want to go down a rabbit hole looking at the wrong things or getting recommendations in search that are not what they uh, intended. And then you have predictive segmentation, you know, this ability to create segments and categorize customers based on a high probability of certain behavior. You know, just, um, you know, think of that when you're looking at things like um, offers and promotions or you're looking at uh, product recommendations. Just imagine the benefits to your margins if you can predict which customers are going to buy um, so that you don't need to do some sort of special offer. You don't need to offer a discount or an incentive in order to get them to uh, to convert. And then this is the one that I'm most excited about. And, that, you know, there's um, there's obviously a lot of a um, lot of hype about this. Um, I even just today seeing comments coming out of the Center for AI Safety saying that uh, um, generative AI could lead to extinction. I'm not quite sure who's getting extinct, but, you know, it's a bit, a little bit, uh, you know, the hype in the other direction. But I do think chat GPT is going to get incorporated faster than, than people expect. I know our innovation teams are working with um, prototypes with generative AI and avatars and are already producing amazing results. But, you know, I, I look at ChatGPT and I play with ChatGPT in my in my role as the director of marketing. You know, and I um, I find myself using it more and more for an enhanced search. And I can see that moving to the, the, the commerce arena. But I also think, you know, it can go further. You know, we've got um, chatbots that are using AI now to engage in conversations with customers rather than having to have live um, people uh, taking those calls. But the one area where I think it, it's really exciting is truly is around the smart assistants. You know, smart assistants um, that represent me, that I give instructions to, that go off and find and buy things on my behalf from off property. Um, you know, I think that's a, a really exciting uh, process. So there's a quick a quick over, overview of why I think you should look to replatform if you're an Oracle ATG. Lots of things happening from a, a, a revenue standpoint that you could incorporate quickly and easily into your business. And then I see these trends that are coming that are only going to drive faster acceleration of um, innovation. So with that, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Brian Gillespie. Hey, thanks, Pete. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I think what's interesting as I bring up this next slide is uh, I'm going to start from 
the bottom left and work my way up. And, and what I mean by that is let's start with commerce and really what, you know, the definition of commerce is today compared to 15 years ago. You know, way back when it was e-commerce, it was a e or a digital channel for um, shoppers or buyers to purchase goods or services from organizations. And over time, that e-commerce slowly transitioned over to digital commerce or just commerce. And the reason for that is because so much of the activity that takes place on that digital commerce platform is much more than just a shopper or buyer transacting with the or, with that specific organization. So it now includes, you have to enable CSRs, customer service reps, to go in and help customers through the buying process or help those buyers through the buying process where they're struggling. You have sales reps, partner sales, uh, where you want to uh, you know, allow those sales reps to go in and, and identify, hey, what are my customers doing on uh, the digital channel? You know, what's in their shopping cart? What have they purchased in the past? Uh, and even put together quotes uh, and, R and allow RFQs to be generated. So those buyers or shoppers um, can go ahead and work with the organization on a one-on-one -on -one basis with those sales reps. It also needs to include, you know, post-order capabilities, uh, as well as other non-traditional channels. You know, it's expected now that you be, can do uh, returns. It's expected that CSRs can do appeasements uh, on on that uh, digital channel. It's expected that you want to be able to do exchanges. Um, so e-commerce has or e-commerce has transitioned over to digital commerce or commerce over the past, you know, 15 years, and that's really what commerce is today. If you go up one now to composable, and the composable piece was, if we go back a little bit, you know, again, back in the past, I like to look at, you know, applications 15 years ago as like mud balls. Uh, you started off as a mud ball, and when you wanted to add additional capabilities to that mud ball, you slap more mud on it or more capabilities, and it just grew and grew and grew to what we now call the monolith. Uh, you know, recently, five years, six years ago, that mud ball was that it's almost like a pendulum now the pendulum swung from that giant monolith mud ball to saying hey let's break that mud ball down so we can go ahead and quickly innovate with each of those individual capabilities uh, without impacting the other part of the mud ball so you had maybe 50 60 70 little mud balls um, so what what and then what's happened now is what we're seeing is uh, the the pendulum swinging somewhat in the middle now, depending on the organization. And that's where the integrated piece comes into. Um, it's because integrated and composable are, are go hand in hand. Where the problem lies with the microservices or those mini mud balls was, yeah, it was much faster to innovate, much faster for individual teams to work on individual elements of a complete solution, these mini, mini monoliths or mini, application, mini uh, pieces of functionality. What we're seeing, though, is the time save or the, 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 the savings or the innovation speed uh, really had what you gained. You also had to take into account the time and money to wire or stitch all those mud balls together. And what, we, what what's, we're re recognizing today is that the time and effort and money, not only just for the original implementation, but the maintenance, the ongoing maintenance, the ongoing um, work post go live or post when you release the application is a lot more expensive than the old monolith. And the benefits are just not outweighing the 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 faults of that monolith itself. So what we're seeing is that pendulum swinging in the middle somewhere, and that's where integrated and composable come in. Yes, we want to have composability. We want to be able to swap out you know, different elements of the application, have people work on it. But at a, at a granular level, that's not too granular. And I, from a commerce perspective, I always like to look at it as. Yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure that your store, the, the the storefront or the user interface, whether it's a buyer or shopper, can be quickly changed without having to redeploy your entire commerce engine. So absolutely make that its own little mud ball. Uh, a lot of times search. Absolutely. Search. You want to adjust. You want to uh the tune you want to refine, uh, you want to you know you know quickly pivot uh, based on what search terms and what uh, what customers and buyers are searching for on your site. So absolutely, that makes a, a sense to have that as its own little mud ball and have that as a, as a service. 
And I can go through many more, like inventory. Uh, we talk about CSRs. You can talk about marketplaces. What we've done at HCL Commerce or HCL Software is we've taken all of those composable elements. And what we've done is we've integrated it, integrated them for you. So we're still giving the business the flexibility to say, hey, I don't want to use your search. I don't want to use your inventory. I want to take that mud ball out and put in another mud ball. Absolutely, you can do that. Nope, and, that and that's where the composable comes in. However, what we're doing is because we're fully integrated, fully tested, that you the, the, the time to go live uh, and the time it takes to implement our solution is drastically reduced because us as a vendor, we're taking care of the integration uh, pieces of that of that application. So what you'll see on the right hand side is really a culmination of all of those, I'll say mini monoliths or not the fine granular mud balls, but the instead of 20 or 30 or 40, maybe there's 10 or 20 mud balls. But they're, they're mud balls that make sense where you want the flexibility around your storefront, around search, around inventory, uh, et cetera. So what you're seeing is in the, in the kind of like the middle layer are those different elements of commerce that make sense to break them out. And then up top, what you'll see is, yeah, you want to make sure that you have all of your plugins, right? You know, your shipping, your, your, your tax, your payment providers, reviews, your social uh, integrations, you want to make sure you can absolutely integrate those very easily uh, as part of that solution as well. And then really, like I said, the very top piece right in the middle is your storefront. That's completely broken out. So as you want to change the look and feel, you want to adjust the flows, you want to adjust what that interface is for the shopper or buyer, absolutely can do that without, you know, touching that lower, you know, uh, row of your commerce capabilities just you know change the look and feel of it and then on the right hand side this is where you want to start looking at you know make sure you can integrate your, all your analytics make sure you're capturing all the data we'll get into that in a minute around data but you want to make sure you're capturing all the data make sure you're uh, you, you have all the insights you need for what those buyers or shoppers are doing on the far left side what you'll see of the diagram you'll see add-ons right from an HCL software perspective, we're more than just commerce. You know, we we have our Voltimex, which is which is our low code, no code application. We have CMM, which is our our chat uh, capabilities. Our uh, HCL Unica, which is our our uh, enterprise marketing uh, engine, uh, as well as any type of configurator you need for complex products. And then the very bottom row is you want to just make sure from an integration perspective that you can support all the integrations from an ERP, PIM, CRM, order management, uh, as well as then looking at uh, how easy it is for those integrations to take place. And quite frankly, the out of the box integrations that we have as well. And the last thing you'll see on the, the bottom is really around the core databases and where the strategy is around databases. Because, you know, the constraint many times on an application is the single database at the database layer. Uh, what we're doing at HCL is we're breaking that database apart. We're going away from the standard, um, uh, uh, you know, old DB2 Oracle databases and we're going into Postgres. Uh, we're, we're going NoSQL. And how do you break that apart so the data um, interactions between the data layer and the application are spread across multiple databases to reduce that, uh, that uh, or actually increase the throughput uh, and diminish the lag at that data layer. So if we keep going, what we'll see then is when I, when I started talking about data, and that is around the data monetization piece. One of the elements that really that has taken place over the past, I would say, 10 years is the culmination of data that organizations have been collecting. It's now time to start leveraging that data and monetizing it. And what I mean by that is, how are you looking at that data? How are you uh, parsing through that data and recognizing trends, recognizing maybe gaps, maybe there's struggle, maybe there's uh, different parts of that, you know, uh, uh, areas of the of what customers are doing on your site uh, or on a mobile app. Hey, listen, we can improve that, which will ultimately drive more revenue. So it's again, it's like, okay, wait. So we've noticed in the, for example, uh, you know, more uh, items more more like uh, or or similar to, you know, or people that have purchased this have also purchased this or similar items. And a lot, you know, everyone says, yeah, we can just do that in business, you know, through uh, rules and through uh, through just, uh, you know, associations within the tool. But it's much faster than that today. Right. So you may have a scenario where 
uh, there is a trend that just takes place uh, that has uh, occurred on a social site and they go out and they're, they're, they are they want to purchase these multiple items together. Uh, we should be able to uh, identify those patterns through AIML and through uh, the automated process so you don't have to wait for a business user to identify that or to look at three, four, five different locations of data to identify this trend. We should be doing that and their platform should be doing that for you. And that's all about the integrated commerce model as well. Because we have search, because we have our storefronts, because we have our promotions engine and what people are putting in the, the cart um, and what, what people are, uh, all the promo codes are using, what promotions are being used, what's being clicked on. Because you have all that data in a single entity, this is where you can really start maximizing uh, your data and start leveraging that data to automate the process. Say, hey, listen, we've noticed that buyers are constantly buying these items together for the past four hours. It makes sense to now have on those product pages or product list pages or search results pages those items together uh, because that's what people are that, that's what the people want to buy and that's what people are interested in. So have the you know path of least resistance allowing them to buy that. That's all about data monetization, and this is really what the modern platforms today can do for you uh, going forward. And then last but not least is I'm going to I know this is specifically about scalability, but I'm going to go back to not only just scalability at peak traffic, but I always like to compare the your applications to a chain. You know, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And when you get into the architecture that we have today of microservices and even not the fine green, even the larger uh, mud balls or microservices, you really have to look at the chatter between all of them because the the site or the application is only as fast as that slowest you know, the chatter, the slowest link between your your microservices or your mud balls. So what we do here with, with HCL Commerce is because we're fully integrated, we benchmark every single one of our releases. So we benchmark to search result pages, we re, uh, uh, you know from a timing perspective, page load times, we benchmark uh, ca uh, cart uh, activity. So we want to make sure you're getting through a cart less than you know each page less than sub second uh, per se. Uh, and then most importantly is, uh, is the peak traffic. You want to make sure that the volume throughput during your peak traffic i'll use for retailers it's black friday uh, for b2b organizations it's sometimes friday afternoons every day of the week it could be every afternoon of the week you want to make sure that you know from eight to two or eight till three you have that site there for uh your your customers to quote unquote shop or investigate or research their product but at, from three o'clock to five o'clock that's when everyone's hitting that buy button and you want to make sure that you can handle 600, 700 orders a minute, uh, so your 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 scalability is there, so you're not you don't have any slowdowns. And that's the partnership that we have with our customers, because we do that validation uh, of for all of our releases across the entire solution, all of the capabilities. That's where our ability to scale and support at peak traffic, and that's and that's the the partnership we have with with our customers. So I think you know from a from a platform perspective, yes. We are microservices. Yes, we're headless. Yes, we're composable. However, we're more than that. We're integrated. And more importantly is we're also multi-channel. So whether it's a shopper or a buyer, but it's also a CSR sales rep. Uh, and uh, we, we support all that as well. And then to get to this is how are you leveraging that data uh, to monetize and grow and, and recognize more revenue. revenue. And then most importantly, this last slide is uh, the partnership that we have with our customers around scalability and performing at peak traffic. So with that, uh, I'm going to hand this back over to our friends at Royal Cyber. Thanks, Peter and Brian. We'll take over from here. We'll start with a brief introduction about Royal Cyber. Uh, we are an IT consultant and digital transformation company which specializes in services, solutions, and softwares. We've been serving for more than 20 years and we have more than 2000 employees globally. And uh, around 500 or more than 500 are certified consultants who are working in 10 different locations, uh, which are spread across five, five continents. We have around 600 plus uh, clients across the globe and we are technology partners, obviously with HCL Commerce, uh, but apart from this uh, with Salesforce, 
uh, Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, uh, Dell Boomi, and more. Uh, next, we'll uh, provide a brief detail about the HCL commerce practice. So Royal Cyber's global HCL delivery network has extensive skills for quality, local solutions at speed. We have 20 plus resources who are deployed in our headquarters, which is based out of Chicago. And we have more than 80 plus HCL commerce resources in different of four or four offshore development centers. Uh, out of those 20 plus or more than uh, 30, I would say, uh, certified uh, system administrators, network deployment or uh, certified developers. A summary of experiences which would help you understand why you should opt for Royal Cyber. So we have the best knowledge of B2B and B2C commerce as we have several HCL commerce implementations for some of our the largest global and national brands. Large HCL commerce delivery team, as you mentioned, we have over 80 uh, HCL commerce developers and server admins and more than 20 or 30 resources are certified out of those. A strong North American presence, over 20 HCL commerce resources are in uh, based out of US all alone. Uh, we are established partnered with HCL Commerce and we do specialize in the HCL Commerce platform uh, partner and reseller partners as well. We have deep HCL Commerce and e-commerce expertise, five HCL Commerce delivery centers worldwide in the US, India and Pakistan. So we have both onshore and offshore uh, development centers. And obviously, we have been around uh, with the way we've been working with a lots of customers. So we build innovation. We have built several ad assets internally as well as we have deployed a few for our customers. So that gives an edge uh, to our any any competitors. Uh, engagement models. Uh, we mostly have these four engagement models. First is the training model. Uh, so we do offer admin and developer trainings for both V8 and V9 and as well uh, 9.1 now. So we have all these trainings on top of it. We do have some uh, content available for the functional trainings as well that might help the business folks to understand uh, what HCL Commerce is all about or how, how it could be used uh, based on your customer needs. Managed services support. So we have this uh, 24 by 7 support who helps you uh, with the monitoring alert, troubleshooting, performance tuning, uh, cloud DevOps, post production support, as well as the CI CD setup and other, any other uh, deployment support kind of stuff. Software development. So we do version upgrades, uh, storefront customizations, backend customizations, management center customizations, migration from Solar to Elastic. So any, any software development that is related. Uh, with the HCL Commerce or uh, the microservices as well. We do handle that very well. Uh, finally, staff augmentation. We have several certified resources who can be deployed to work within any team as they are vastly skilled on HCL Commerce. Some major integrations that we have done for our customers as well as some internal POCs as well. So we have integrated HCL Commerce Elasticsearch, obviously Search Spring, Algolia, a few marketplaces uh, that include Cellvisor and Miracle, Dell Mumi, which is being used as a metalware, and then a few payment solutions as Brain T, CyberSource, Amazon Pay, uh, tax integration for Avalara, tax validation for Avalara, and obviously the uh, Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, so different types of analytics as well. We have also deployed uh, the uh, Elastic Stack uh, for one of our customers. And apart from all this, we have uh, developed an internal solution or integration for cryptocurrency payments uh, using CoinGate. So that plugin is available as well. So uh, with the limited time, that's a brief introduction about the uh, about Royal Cyber and our HCL commerce practice. Uh, for the rest of the slides, I would like to onboard my fellow colleague whose uh, name is Vivek Rana, and he'll be providing details uh, about the entire migration and the, he'll be covering the rest of the slides. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm Vivek Rana, working as a senior technical lead with Royal Cyber. Today I'm going to discuss how you can plan and execute migration of your Oracle ATG Commerce solution to HCL Commerce suit. Later in this presentation, we would see a small demo of HCL Commerce features and functionalities. Let's begin with how you can prepare for this migration. 
We recommend breaking up an existing project into different business domains and moving the relevant functionality and data outside Oracle Commerce. This typically means switching from an on-premise monolithic architecture to a service oriented headless cloud solution. We also suggest a staged migration plan that minimizes disruptions and risks. In this phase, we have two main goals to achieve. That is discovery and gap analysis and build a building a migration roadmap. Discovery and gap analysis. During the initial stage of any migration, Discovery and gap analysis is crucial since it enables you to determine the project's complete scope and create a project plan. The goals for this step are review your current solution, examine your existing e-commerce application to find out what features and functionalities it provides, what processes and background activities it supports. These queries may seem simple or trivial. However, older code bases often have unique edge cases that must be thoroughly documented. Additionally, we strongly advise against moving your entire digital business at once. Instead, focus on less critical assets by defining priority and criticality, such as a less fun relevant functionality before handling the main business. Next is to prioritize. Make a comprehensive list of all the processes and edge cases to select which ones need to be migrated first and which ones can be handled later or dropped altogether. Evaluate in a business perspective and determine the value they bring to your business. A feature shouldn't be on the list if it doesn't bring any value. Gap analysis. Compare your prioritized list of functions and processes with features and functionalities of HCL Commerce Solutions suit. You will come across three main options for each item out the box, which means the current feature or functionality is available in HCL Commerce Solution and can be used as is or with minor modifications. Second, customizations. That means any feature or functionality that is unavailable in the out of the box version of HCL Commerce and it needs to be built as a custom implementation. Third party, that means the features and the domains that are not in the scope of HCL Commerce and need integration with the third party services. The next step in migration preparation is building a migration roadmap. Create a migration roadmap with timeline, deliverables and milestones. The three areas that we need to focus on are data migration, business logic and UI UX. Data migration. One of the most critical aspects of migration is moving your data from Oracle ATG Commerce to the HCL Commerce database. Data migration include, might include the following product catalog, customer data, orders, and contracts for B2B stores. Business logic. This includes features and func functionalities that need to be custom built or integrated with third party services. E commerce platforms today have loads of out of the box functionalities compared to their counterparts, which were developed decades ago. This means fewer customizations need to be developed. A feature you spent weeks and months developing may already be available as an out of the box feature, making your migration journey much faster. UI UX, your current storefront needs to be migrated to either one of the out of the box stores, that is the React based headless B2C or B2B store. You can also build your own headless store by using any latest front end technology. Our flexible APIs enable you to prototype quickly, connect the front end of your choice, and create a bespoke customer experiences across all available touch points. Next, we move to migration execution. The first step in migration execution is data modeling and data migration. Defining a data model is one of the critical activities of migration and creating a data model in advance reduces migration complexity. This is because the catalogs, orders, users, and other data is what makes up an e-commerce application. And thus, you need to take utmost caution while migrating your data from Oracle ATG to HCL Commerce database. At this stage, you need to take advantage of available opportunities for optimization. The HCL Commerce data model offers data integrity, optimal performance. 
It has a diverse collection of tables and stores HCL Commerce instance data. Indexes prevent over indexing and help maintain an optimal balance between data retrieval and manipulation activities. Business logic is used at the application level instead of a database trigger. Triggers facilitate data staging and optimistic logging. Few SQL based database store produced procedures are used to data intensive activities. To support your customizations, HCL Commerce database model can be extended. Each database table has few empty columns that can be used to insert your custom properties or existing tables can be extended to support more significant customization of any existing out of the box functionality. New tables can be added for adding new features and functionalities. You may want to consider following steps while migrating your data. Wherever possible, map the database tables between HCL Commerce and Oracle Commerce database so that the data can be directly imported. However, it's rare to observe such direct mapping between two extremely different data models. You should also consider data type and size of mapped columns. Secondly, create a custom or extended tables for all out of the box Oracle ATG Commerce database tables and the custom tables for your specific business use cases if those can be mapped to an existing HCL Commerce table. Export the data from your Oracle ATG Commerce database in a CSV or XML format. Modify or edit the exported data to fit into HCL Commerce database, that is column and data type mapping. This process can be automated by building a utility. And lastly, HCL Commerce has an inbuilt data load utility that provides an efficient solution for loading information into your HCL Commerce database. Leverage this utility to import your commerce data into HCL Commerce database. The next step in migration execution is building custom extension or business logic. HCL Commerce provides out of the box starter stores with features and functionalities that are commonly found in any e commerce stores. These features include user registration, account management, product catalog, shopping cart, checkout, order management, returns and promotions, organizations and buyer administration, etc. During migration, planning stage, you already prepared a list of existing features available in your current solution and ones that are required. We have outlined a high level approach to move your business logic from Oracle ATG Commerce to HCL Commerce platform. Compare the features of your current solution with the features of the HCL Commerce starter store and build a matrix. All those features mapped to HCL Commerce out of the box features can be directly leveraged. However, you may find all the features are not identical as no solution will ever be exactly what you need. You will have to extend out of the box functionalities to match your existing implementation. For example, if you want to add an validation before adding an item to the shopping cart and this validation is not provided in out of the box functionality then you need to extend or customize the default behavior of order create functionality hcl commerce provides two approaches for extending or customizing out of the box features a traditional development model in which Core HCL Commerce functionality requires you to extend server functions directly. And the second is externalized customizations or XC framework that isolates your customization code within an XC server, server and thus providing more flexibility. This is because XC customizations run on their own server and the upgrades or fixes to the core components of HCL Commerce system will not overwrite them. The approach you use depends on complexity of your requirements and the benefits of customization code isolation. Lastly, any feature that's not provided as out of the box by HCL Commerce needs to be developed from scratch. This would include modifying HCL Commerce database schema, customizing access layer, adding components for your business logic, adding new REST APIs and handlers, etc. The next thing to do is system integration. An e-commerce store cannot function independently or a standalone or as a standalone application. It may need to be integrated with third party systems for inventory management, order management, address validation, tax calculations, product fees, etc. 
it was often left to the developers to design integrations from scratch because Oracle ATG Commerce does not offer a convenient way to support integrations. However, HCL Commerce provides simple integration points and techniques. Integration options are available for various IBM and third party products and services. And the last thing to do is UI and UX integration. Integrating use user experience layer takes maximum time during migration. If you want to implement a new storefront, HCL Commerce Starter Store simplifies the process as they come packed with many out-of-the-box features that could be directly leveraged or with minor modifications. Though any specific business use cases not covered by out-of-the-box features will need to be implemented from scratch or if possible with an extension of an out-of-the-box feature. Now we will see a small demo of the features and functionalities of HCL Commerce. I'm going to cover the Emerald Store, which is a B2C store, the Sapphire Store, which is a B2B store, and the Management Center, which is the business tool provided by HCL Commerce. Emerald Store. Emerald Store is a React-based headless B2C starter store. It has functionalities like product catalog, shopping cart, order management and history, checkout, etc. It supports features like multiple shipments, multiple payment methods for an order, multiple quick checkout profiles, wish list, store locator, buy online and pick up in store, etc. You can use Emerald Starter Store as a reference or a starting point for building your own custom store. Following are some of the pages that are available in Emerald Starter Store like home page, category page, product listing page with facets, product variant and item B2C page, search result page with facets, product details page with SKUs collection, guest and registered user shopping, registered user management, cart page and mini cart with recently added items and cart totals, checkout flow that is multi-page checkout, error pages, my account, marketing content and home on home and category pages. Now let's see a simple checkout flow in the Emerald store. This is how the Emerald store looks. Let's start browsing or uh, before that let's sign in into the store. I have already created a user. I'll just sign in with this. All right, now we will start browsing. So this is the product catalog. Let's buy something from the furniture. I'll select this product. Select a color probably. And then add to cart. The item gets added and we see a notification for view full cart or checkout pages. Let's go to the checkout page. So here you see we have an option of whether I want to get the order to be delivered or if I want the uh, I can pick up the I order from the store. It uses the store locator, locator functionality. So I'm going to get it delivered. So I'm going to select the shipping address. I've already added a shipping address and a billing address for this particular user. Let's use this address and I'll keep it default the shipping method. Now I'll move to the payment page. Here we have different payment methods. Let's select cash on delivery. And the billing address is already there. I'll just use this address for now. The next page is the review page where you can just review your items, your shipping details, your payment details, and your order summary. Once you click on place order, the order gets placed. So this is a very simple uh, checkout flow for the Emerald store. Now let's move on to the Sapphire store. The Fire store is a React based headless B2B starter store. It has almost all the features provided by the Emerald store along with B2B functionalities like contracts, trading agreements, buyer and seller organizations, etc. These are some of the pages which are present in the Sapphire B2B store home page, category page, marketing content on home and category pages, price and catalog filters, product listing page with facets, 
product variant and item B2B item list view, search results page with facets, registered organization management, registered user management, cart management and mini cart with the recently added items and cart totals. Checkout flow that is a multi page checkout, recurring order pages, order history pages and error pages. Now today the feature that we are going to see in the demo is called shared orders. B2B store users, users have the ability to keep multiple orders in the same buyer organization. If you are a registered buyer, you can manage orders other than your own cart. Shared orders are very much like users private orders, except they allow other users from the order owners organization to see and contribute to the order contributes can add items to other users shared orders and delete those items or update their quantities. The owner of the order has complete authority of the order. The owner can modify or remove any item in that order, whether owned by self or by the contributors. Let's see this functionality in action. So this is the Sapphire store. I've already registered a organization and two users for this particular organization. I'll just sign in with the first user. So to create a shared order, I'll just first have to go to the dashboard. and click on in progress orders. So right now we do not have any orders which are in progress. We can click create on a new order. We have to give a name to this order. And we have an option to select it as private or shared order. If you select it as a private order, other users in this organization will not have not will not have not have access to this particular order and they can't contribute to this order. So I will select shared order as this particular option and click on create order. So it creates the order and once the order is created, I can go to the order and click on add products. Once you click on add products, it will give take you to the home page and there you can browse the catalog and add products of your choice. Let me add. This particular order. So now this particular product has been added to the shared order. Let's go and check the cart. So here we can see the product has been added. Now I will log out this user and log in as a second user under this organization and see if I can edit this order. Okay. To access the shared order created by other order other users, we need to go to the dashboard. And click on in progress orders, so any orders, any shared orders basically which have been created by other users will be visible under the screen. Now I want to edit this order, so I have to select this first. And this becomes your current cut. Next. It will ask you can add the products into this order. Let me add this. The item gets added and I can go to the order details. So now you can see that I as a different user of this organization was able to edit or basically add an item to an order which was created by a different user. But the th only thing is that I am not the owner of this order and I cannot submit the order or I cannot edit any item which has not been contributed by me. On the other hand, the order owner has the complete authority and he can 
either add or remove the items from this order. So this is all about shared orders in B2B stores. Now let's move to the management center. The management center for HCL Commerce is a suite of tools to support store management, merchandising and marketing tasks for business users. It has tools for organization and user management, catalog management, analytics, system administration, etc. In a brief, if I we can go through the tools which are provided by management center like catalog tool, marketing tool, promotions tool, attachment or assets tool, catalog filter, and pricing tool, installments tool, store management tool, workspace management tool, organizations, approvals, security properties, registries, search tool, page composer tool, marketplace, managing shipping, managing taxes, user management, messages, messages, manage message types, member groups, extended sites, store management, scheduler, transport methods, accounts and contracts. Now the feature that we are going to discuss today on management center is called the page composer. The page composer tool lets business users manage store pages. This tool allows you to create store pages and assign SEO URLs to them. You can also define what widgets are displayed within your store page by means of page templates. Once the layout is defined, you can assign it to be shown on content pages or category and product pages. You can create, edit or delete page layouts and schedule when they should be displayed in your store. You can also create custom widgets in to, in to incorporate into your store pages. Now let's see page composer. Before we move to management center, I would like you to show how a page composer page looks like. So this is the Emerald Store home page. And. We can see different sections within this page. The first section is a marketing content widget. The second section is also a marketing content widget. The third section is the recommended products widget. Then we have a marketing content again. Then we have a featured product widget. And in the last, we have featured category page uh, widget. Also uh, worth mentioning here is that the header and footer of a particular page are always fixed. Those cannot be edited by page composer. Now I will edit the recommended category widget in this home page. We can see as of now, we are seeing four categories into this layout, which are living room, dining room, lighting and furniture. Let's say I want to display only two categories in this section and I want to remove lighting and furniture from this layout. To do that, I'll have to log into the management center. So to go to the page composer, I have to select. Manage stores and then go to page composer. So here uh, we see different types of pages which are available, but we have to go to the layouts. Here we see different layouts which are currently defined for this particular store. Here we have selected the store as Emerald. Now uh, we see the home page layout. I'll edit this. Now we can see this is the layout of this home page. As we were discussing that we have some marketing content and then the product recommendation and category recommendation at the end. Let's select this one. And as I said, I want to display only two categories. Let's select those categories or rather remove those categories. I do not want to display furniture. And lighting into this. So I'll have to unselect it from this layout and there is no need to save. It automatically saves. Let's go back to the Emerald home page and see how it looks now.
So now we can see in this recommended category page, we can only have living room and dining room as recommended categories. So this makes it fairly easy to manage your store pages. This was all about the HCL Commerce demo, and now we are open for question and answers. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.